Hello, I'm Alada Numbra. I'm back. A lot of people really enjoyed the last video where I did a song breakdown, and I also had people ask me to talk a bit about sound design stuff. So I figured I'd just make a comprehensive sound design video on how to do hard wave sound design. We'll talk about leads, basses, plucks, ambience. Basically, the goal is to just give you all of the knowledge you need to make your own hard wave synths. I will be using Serum for this, but the tips should be applicable to other synths as well. So yeah, let's just go right into to it. I'll start with Reese basses because it's a pretty iconic sound. A couple ways to do it. The first way is you just take a saw wave. Give it as many voices of units as you want. I usually go 16. Sometimes less can be cool. Yeah, like three. I usually just leave the D2 knob alone. I don't usually mess with it, I just leave it. We'll go with 16 for this. Uh, I turn the cutoff filter on and I move it to about 140 hertz. Turn up the resonance to about 50% and then turn the drive up about 50%. Oh, also important, make sure you lower this in octave. Put it in mono, that's also gonna be important. And then give it about 300 milliseconds of portamento. Yeah, like 250 to 300 is usually pretty solid. I like to turn on the sub oscillator and then go into the wavetable editor and remove the fundamental. So then you just have this constant sine wave here underneath. So yeah, this, this is a pretty basic respace. The other way to make this, grab two saw waves, turn them both down an octave. Yeah, so it sounds like this right now, but if you just adjust the tuning of them. And then also. So there's, yeah, those are the two ways to make a re-space. And let's talk about some things we can do to make this more interesting. One thing is just go into effects. I like to give a bit of gain up here, like three dB. Yeah, let's go back to like 140. Let's give it a bit of gain here too. Not necessary though. Adding distortion can be nice. Just like, <laughs> you might not need that much, but. You can play around with the amount and the type of distortion. 90% like is probably better. I wouldn't crank it to 100. What I like to do, take an LFO and put it on the fine pitch. Uh, that's a bit too much. Set this to linear. And then, yeah. just the rate, I think, too. Yeah, like that subtle amount of detune adds some nice character to the Reese. I should probably add more. Yeah, it's a nice thing you can do, you don't have to do it. Like I said, all these things I'm just showing you to give you more ideas to play around with when doing sound design for Hardwave. Other thing you can do, super compressed Reese space, so... Don't filter it. You just <laughs> you don't even touch the filter. Uh, you still do this where you remove the fundamental. Where is it? I I always have a hard time finding it. Still want mono three hundred. All right, then you go in here. And just slap a multi band compressor on it. and crispy. Play around with the volume to your liking and everything. I did this on my track Midnight. It was like the weirdest EQ. I did, yeah, I EQ'd it like this. Uh, and then I think I added another compressor. I think there was no downward compression. Yeah, I did some like that. It was ridiculous. The only other basses I've kind of played around with in hard wave. Kind of cool if you want to do like dubstep basses as fills. I'm going to do like growl sound design. I'll show that off. But go through these spectral wavetables. 
go through these and find one that has a texture that you like when you just wiggle this around. This is kind of cool. Let me turn this down an octave. From here to here, so let's do this. So, then you slow this down. About one bar. From here, you just take this LFO and you put it on pretty much everything that you can. So, I put it on the filter too. That's too much filtering. At a sub bass. We can automate the level, I think. If I do this, I think it's about like 75% usually. Let's throw some like weirder filters on. Uh, oh, yeah, you can just like drag it <laughs> to all of these, uh, and then you get. That's some nice distortion. Yeah, I think I just like do that. Let's make this wider. We could even automate this. Make it, make it get smaller, that might be cool. A lot of this is just playing around with uh, the other way. Why does it go this way? Yeah, so I mean, you can just like do this and then you can go to the effects too. Let's do it here. Uh, why not? We'll do some distortion. <laughs> so you can try experimenting with like these kinds of bases as fills too. Most of the time you're going to be using a re-space, and then for your sub-base, I will layer a sine wave underneath. Minus 2.5 dB, I found. Is... Oh, that's your sub-base. Hard wave bases, that's pretty much all I have there. Let's do leads next. Most of the time you can, you're just going to be using a saw or a square. So let's just start with this saw wave. On leads, I usually will do a compressor and an EQ. Uh, the compressor, or multi-band, you just said it's like 2 to 1, and like 5 dB of gain. And then on the EQ, I will do a low cut. I'll turn the Q value down to about 45%. And for the frequency, if I want more, if I want a bit more low end, I'll do about like 140. But if I don't want as much, I'll do about 210. So in this case, I think just because we're kind of playing around, it doesn't matter too much, so I'll just go with 140. Uh, uh, most of the times with the leads, I just put them in mono too, so I'll do that now. Um, oh, and then just for demonstration's sake, usually I will do a reverb on my mixing. Uh, in mixing, so I, I will show how I do reverbs. For demonstrations purposes, I'll just add a bit of delay. It's already sounding, like, cool. Like, you could probably... I mean, you could just use that as a lead if you want. We can do better than that. But this, this is a perfectly cool sound. Like, like I would vibe to that in a hard wave song. Super saws, yeah. That's better. And then you can play around with... Play around with the amount of unison detune. What if I use a square wave? So this is just a square. So a square also sounds really good. Uh, you could just use that. Um, I mean, that would work perfectly cool too. And then again, I just start with the uh, unison, right? Make it a super square. Already sounds great, and then again, you can just like playing around with the amount of detune, or you can make it crazy. You can do the same thing for the square leaves, um, but that's that's really the the start of it. 
you're gonna shape the sound a lot with this. Just play around with saws and squares. You can use like a, you could use a sign too. It's cool if you do a down sampled sign. So if I add distortion right before here and I turn on down sample, that's a pretty cool lead you can do. Um, but otherwise I don't really touch signs too much. Most of what I do, I'm just using saws and squares. Let's go back to the square. So let's give it unison again. Also doing less voices of unison is a good idea too. Try seeing how it sounds with less. Because it will, it will really shape the character of the sound. Turn this up a bit. Let's try something interesting here. Sometimes it's fun to play around with the attack. So if you just increase the attack to like 100, between 100 and 200. Actually, let me turn off mono. It's gonna make this easier. That can be a cool thing too, playing around with the attack. Let's go back to our saw. That's a bit too much. I want something that's a bit more thin for what I'm about to do. We can make it cooler. So one thing that's kind of cool, deliberately like detune it slightly. Doesn't do too much now, but definitely play around with this, especially when you start using multiple oscillators. So, so I think what I'll do, I'm gonna turn this up like 20. I'm gonna add another oscillator here. Okay, so let's just move this up so they're in the same, the same amount. I'm just, I mean, that sounds kind of cool, but let's move this up. We can also give this more. And then you can give this like different detuning too, so like maybe. But I'm. I think this is one. I think I'm gonna leave it like this. This I think this sounds cool. Uh, so then what I'll do from here is I like to go into the chaos oscillator, uh, turn up the rate all the way, set it to sample and hold, and then send it to I'll send it to the fine pitch. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna make the lead a bit more noisy. So I think that's too much, so I need to go into the matrix here. See, it's got a bit of, like, harshness to it now. I can- I might as well do it to the other one, too. Put chaos on. And again, this needs to go both directions. Actually, let's make it even more screechy. Let's. There we go. Oh, it's not in mono. Oh, yeah. Let's turn it back to mono. That'll sound better. I'm not satisfied just yet, though. Let's chuck on some distortion. If we filter it, it might actually be better. Filter that in, it would sound really cool. Yeah, so that's kind of the gist of it. It's it's just a lot of playing around. Play around with the square and the saw. You can pretty much make any hard wave lead out of those two things. If you wanted to get more adventurous with the wave table, you can, but it's not necessary. Then play around with the attack. You can also play around with the release, but I usually don't for leads. Play around with your effects. Let's look at some of the other ones I've made. Acid leads are cool in hard wave, so we'll talk about that a bit. <laughs> I made a square one too. I make this, get a saw, 
It's mostly the filter here. I like to turn on the note, so it changes the it changes the filter based on the note you play. Uh, turn up the resonance to like 50 to 75 percent is good. Downing all right already. Usually you have to move the position. Let me turn the resonance up more. That's better. Go into our effects again, do compressor, multiband, 5 dB, and then let's set it to 2 to 1 ratio. Want some EQ and some delay. Go grab envelope 2, and then turn the sustain all the way down. Put it to the cutoff. And then just turn this amount down. I'll turn down the Of course, give it some nice distortion. You can also do it with a square. Flux are pretty much... Um, that's the same concept as leads, to just play it like a pluck. With my own sound design, with a lot of plucks, I have it so you can use them as both a lead or a pluck. As a pluck. Or you can use it as a lead. So, you have options. This one. You can actually turn the sustain knob up. Then it becomes a lead. I mean, really, if you wanted to make a pluck, it's pretty easy. Like, just literally just actually wait. There you go, you have a pluck. That's just a bit. You can also play around with the filter, so just route this to the filter. Turn it this way. Actually, I'm gonna take it back, do it this way. Like that's a gist of a pluck. Um, you just do that, and then you do everything else that I talked about with the leads. Play around with the oscillators and the effects. Like, there you go. Ooh, it's super soft now. A lot of it's just playing around with this stuff and figuring out what is cool. The last thing I want to talk about with the leads is if I was to do reverb on it, I would turn off the delay. Or just route it to some random mixer channel. Just one. You can use a reverb of choice. I like delay. You just want to duck your reverb. Um, you can do... This one does it for you. Otherwise, you would just... Uh, I will show you how to do it. So if I were to have this, right? Uh, I would route it to this track. And then you slap a reverb on. Let's use super massive. Let's use the synth wider one, because I can. Um, turn the. This makes it so it's only the wet signal. And then what you do is you would, through whatever means you prefer, I would use a limiter for this. Uh, I turn off the limiter. When you load the fruity limiter, it starts like this. I turn the ceiling all the way up, turn the attack completely down. And then what I'll do is I can use the sidechain tab. So this is taking the signal from here, and I just turn the ratio all the way up. So now what will happen is the reverb stops when I play a note, and then when I let go it does that. I can just play around with the amount. the gist of that. But that's what I do for reverbs with my leads, um, but you can, that's really up to you. Side chaining the reverb makes it sound really huge. Now, last thing I'm going to talk about is ambience. This is actually probably the easiest part of sound design for me. Usually what I'll do, reverb of choice, compressor of choice, I'll use a bit of OTT. I'll put an EQ before, oh wait, no, this is after. Sometimes I'll put an EQ before this, but what you do, get Fruity Convolver or any 
convolver with a white noise and then from there you can just run anything through it and it's gonna sound instantly really cool so we go from this to this You can just make any pad that way, it's crazy. And the fun part is you can just take random samples that you have and chuck them in. Like, I can just take this piano thing, right? Just take this piano sample, run it through. And you instantly get a super pretty ambience. The other thing you can do with this uh, method, let me grab a weird sample. Oh, let's, uh, let's grab like a, uh, let's grab like some dubstep growls. Like, let's, this might actually be usable. Even if I take something as ridiculous as this and run it through. Like that, that still sounds cool. Load your own samples into the convolver. You can load ambient textures in. And then if you run stuff through those textures, it often gives you even more interesting sounds. Yo, you can hear it already. It's like shimmery. Uh, because the, what it is, is it's this. So I use that in the convolver. So then it's running what I'm playing through that. So it gives this nice, like, sparkle to the ambience. I could even try it with, like, a random sample here if I just go into convolver. Let's use this. Just run something through it. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, you'd probably want to trim this down a bit, so, like, use only a few seconds of it, like, five seconds? Usually you want to use, like, five seconds of a texture I found was pretty good. The length of the sample you use will determine how long the decay is, so then I just cut all of this. So then we have this to work with. And it just takes on the characteristics of whatever you run it through and you can get very cool textures that way. That's how you make pads. Uh, super easy, very fun. Um, Cause you can just throw random stuff into it and it's gonna come up with something cool almost every time. Hopefully this video helps you with your own sound design. If you have any questions or any other things that you'd like me to show relating to Hardwave or any of the other genres that I make, uh, let me know and I'd be glad to do that. Preset pack with all 65 of the presets. Those are free so I will leave the link to that in the description and you can have fun with that. And hopefully by looking at some of those presets you can kind of learn some more too. I assigned some macros that will change how it sounds so you can play around with those they're of course free to use in your own music too definitely curious to see what you make with those i hope you enjoyed have an awesome evening or morning afternoon uh, and i'll see you around